Welcome everyone to the second part of Maya Rudin tutorial. Hopefully, you have this model and your skeleton set that you have created for the session one. So, we are going to start from this point onward. Now, since we have created the entire skeleton, it's time for us to combine or bind this to our skin. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to my hypergraph hierarchy, which I can do by going into Windows, Generators, Hypergraph hierarchy, and I'm going to select everything. That means all of my bones. I can do this selection like this, and I'm going to select my mesh as well with the shift key. I can do that. I'm going to select my mesh as well. See, so this is uh, easier, it makes it easier for me to select everything. You can make a selection like this, and there are other ways of making selection as well. You can go to Windows Outline, and you can make sure you select everything here as well but you can see when i select from the hypergraph hierarchy it gives me different colors but when i select from uh, outline it gives me different color indicating that there's a difference between the selection there is so to avoid this ambiguity what we are going to do is we are going to create layers that means i'm going to create a separate layer in maya and i'm going to assign my skeleton set to it and create a, again a new layer and assign my mesh to it so these layers are a way of controlling a complex um, set of objects that you have and when you are working on a complex rig it will be very easy for you to um, use these layers in order to make your animations and rigging sets happen so let me show you how it's done uh, you can see the channel box and the layer panel is right here you can create new layers and empty layers and everything but uh, i'm going to select my skeleton set first of all i can do that by clicking the hip bone because you can remember hip bone of the root bone of everything so if you go to hypergraph hierarchy and, and select on any bone, it can be selected. But when you select on hip bone, it selects everything because that's a parent bone. So while this is selected, you can see this small icon right here. It says create a new layer and assign selected objects. So if I click on it, it creates a layer. And the best part is I can rename this layer. Let's name it as skeleton. And also you can give a color to uniquely identify which layer that you are referring to. So for example, if I give red color and click on save, and if I deselect this, you can see the bones are in red color. So whatever the color that you assign here will be visible. If I set it to green color, so that's green color. It's easier for you to or refer to it. You can select any color that you want. So I'm going to do the same for the mesh. Um, I'm going to select that and create a new layer. And uh, let's name it as skin. So these are skin for the character. So skin mesh. And uh, let's give a color like a, a blue color. So it's easier for us to refer. There's no particular um, kind of a rule for the colors. You can select everything that you want. All right. Now, since we have since we have the skeleton set like this, so you can move it up and down. You can see that's not the way because if I move the skeleton, the mesh should move it uh, along with the movement of the skeleton set. But it doesn't happen at the moment because we don't have uh, any binding connecting the uh, skeleton set to the mesh. So let's do that. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the hypergraph hierarchy and just like like I showed you earlier, I'm going to select everything, including my mesh. So everything is in the white color. You can see that. See? Okay. Now I can go to rigging menu set, skin. I can go to the bind skin options. Rigging menu set, skin, bind skin option. And I can reset it to um, just to make sure that these values are default values and click on bind skin. Now, if I go to hypergraph hierarchy and if I select the hip bone, See, if I move it up and down, it moves the entire character with it. The reason this skeleton has been binded to the skin. So whatever the changes that I'm doing, whatever the movement that I'm doing for the skeleton will be affected. So example, if I select on leg and if I move it up and down, see, that affects the skin as well. Now, if I select this one, if I move it up and down, it affects the skin. But this is wrong, right? This is not actual movement. The reason for it is that we don't have any IK constraints. If you can remember the robot leg lesson that we have done, we have created the IK constraint combining the leg to control it. So this is the next step that we want to have. We need to create IK constraint. So for the leg, the IK constraint that I'm going to create is from the left upper leg to left leg. And for the right leg, right upper leg to right leg. And for the arms, uh, left upper arm to the left arm and right upper arm to the right arm. So let's create this I case to create I case you need to go to Sriggy menu set skeleton create I K handle so the first one is from left upper leg so I'm gonna click on the circle right here and then second click will be on the left leg so you can see 
there is a IK constraint created. If you go to the hypergraph hierarchy, you should see your IK handle 1. And you can move it like this, so the leg controller will work nicely. So you can see character's leg can be moved. So let me undo it and bring it to the zero position. So I'm going to go to outliner and rename my IK. So this is left leg, this character's leg, character's left leg, so left leg IK. And let's do the same for the right side. So skeleton, create IK handle, right upper leg to right leg. And I'm going to rename this as right leg IK. So we have the left leg IK and right leg IK. Again, similar way I can control the right leg as well. Now, the next thing is the arm. So let's go to skeleton, create IK handle. So left upper arm to left arm. You can see we can control the arm like this. So I'm going to rename this to left, the characters left again, arm IK. IK. And let's do the same for the right side as well. So skeleton, create IK handle, right upper arm to right arm. And I can control. So this should be right arm IK. So we have four IKs now, left leg IK, uh, right leg IK, and left arm IK, and right arm IK. So we have four IK constraints. Next thing is the spine IK. Now spine IK cannot be created using the same IK controllers because we have a separate one called create IK spline handle. Now how to create this? Now our spine starts with the hip bone. So from the hip, it goes to spine 1, spine 2, spine 3 and to spine 4. So what I want is a spine IK creating from hip to spine 4. Okay, let's create that. So I'm going to go to skeleton create IK spline handle click on the hip and click on the spline 4 just like that so I get two options actually if you look at it I get the IK handle 1 so let's rename this to spine IK and I get a curve one a curve one if you look at it it's right here in the middle in the below I will tell you the reason for it but for now if you select from the curve and basically goes up and down like this so for now I'm going to rename this to spine IK curve so we have two spine IK and spine IK curve so let me show you what you get with the spine IK now if you select spine IK and if you go to your channel box you can see there are two options called twist and roll. So these are the two things, two controllers that we are getting with the spine IK. Let me show you how it works. For example, the roll, if you select on roll and if you take the mouse pointer to the empty area, if you drag from the middle mouse button, so this is roll. See that is what you are getting. And if you click on twist, this is the twist. So we have roll and twist from the spine IK. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and save this file. So I'm going to save this as um, a different version and quickly. Alright. Let's go to the second part. Now second part is that we have all of this IK but we need to make it easier for us to control. Now for creating animation, you need to go to the outliner, select the left leg IK, get the move tool and move it. And if you want to do the same thing for the right leg IK, again select it. But it's very difficult for you to select and exactly pinpoint the location, isn't it? Because it's not that visible. So when you're creating a rig like this, it's always easier for you to refer or to create some handlers which allows you to manipulate this object. That is exactly what you're going to do. So let me show you how it works. So to control the left leg of this character, I'm going to create a nerve curve and attach my left leg IK to that particular curve. So when I move in that object, the leg will be moved. So I'm going to use uh, a nub surface here, so you can sort of curves surfaces. You can go here and click on this nub circle, which you get one in the middle. So uh, let me increase the size a little bit. So can you understand now that 
um, moving from this circle it is much more easier because you can easily select it rather than selecting from the IK one by one so uh, this is for the reference purpose only this won't be visible in the final rendering but however it's always make it um, a bit interesting it's easier for you to select so the circle is a bit difficult to select but if you shape it in a way that um, it's aligned with your leg it's easier for you to understand where the movement is so this is exactly what I'm going to do. Let me go to the control vertex mode, which you can do by right clicking on it. And um, you can touch from these vertices and make it a little bit um, easier to handle. And please note that this is completely um, only for the preview purposes only. There's no particular kind of a use of uh, doing this in the sense you can keep it as a circle, you can keep it as a square and you can make it nice uh, a shape like this you can make it a nice shape like this but it doesn't make any difference with the controller only difference is it just look nicer and uh, make it a little bit easier for you to select these objects and uh, gives a nice uh, kind of a, a control feeling to your uh, projects so let me make it like a um, kind of a leg shape you can get it like that again uh, there's no particular uh, use of doing this um, except for the fact that it looks better keep that in mind so if I move to the object mode let me rotate it a little bit uh, align with the leg okay object mode. now this will be used to control the leg left leg of my character However, you can see the center point of this object is somewhere here, but should be aligned with the center point of this IK handle. So how can I do that? Well, I can select this object and there is an option called snap to points or snap to pivot. If you turn on this snap to points option, or snap to pivot option, you can see when I move this, it just snap to the points. So I need to snap it to the point right here. So it exactly matches. Uh, the IK left leg IK center okay let's look at from the other viewports as well all right looks better and just verify to the viewpoint yeah so it's exactly in the middle so that's what I need I can turn off the snap to points and while you after you snap it you'll be able to realize that okay um, we need to do some small adjustments for example I want to take a little bit further the front it's easier for me to select this and to this side as well okay brilliant that's what I need right, let's take a copy of this to the other side as well a bit too um, large for my test I'm gonna okay it's much better let's get a duplicate to the other side Sorry about that. Um, let's make sure this is also snapped to the center. Can double check. Well, okay, that's fine. My snap, isn't it? See, now it should be fine. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, rotate this other side so I can check on the rotation here. So it has a rotation of. 9.559 so I can do the same for the other side which is a minus relic okay and I get this leg for the other side it's a little bit uh, okay so much better so we have two controllers uh, which basically allows us to control the left leg and the right leg okay so let's read it so I'm going to go to window outliner and I'm reading this to left leg controller because that's what we are going to control this leg with and this one to right leg controller because that's what we are going to use to control the right leg of it okay let me uh, undo this very quickly we rename it again so this is a uh, left leg controller 
and it is right click control now since we have two controllers we need to make sure that these two controllers are bound to our object um, that means this one should be bounded to our left leg IK right this is the left leg IK is the one that controls the leg but I want to do the same thing when I move in this one when I move in this up and down it should move the leg that's the whole point of creating this left leg controller and one more reason to create this is that I should be able to bring it to the original position without worrying about destroying my rig for example if I move my left leg IK to a place like this and imagine that I do something else and I don't have any ID um, undoes so I won't be able to bring it to the original position without typing the correct value now but the problem is you can see at the zero position the values here are not zero so I have to remember memorize these values so write it down somewhere in order to bring it to the original position so we can avoid that by making the position value of this object at this point a zero for example if I make all of this zero when I move it I can type zero and make sure that it comes to the original position so I can do that by Got by freezing the transformation that means I can instruct Maya that this particular curve at this particular place should be 0 comma 0 so I can go to modify freeze transformation options so I'm going to freeze to translate rotate and scale and click on freeze transform you can see these values become 0 now that means this object right here which is a left leg controller at this particular point is in the zero location and I can do the same for this one so I can go to modify freeze transformation okay. let's go and bind it so what I'm going to bind is left leg controller so with the control key I'm going to select left leg IK because I'm going to bind left leg controller with the left leg IK so I can do that by going into rigging constraint menu and there is a constraint called point because it's a point to point constraint so I can go to the options of the point constraint I can reset it I can turn on option called maintain offset because I want to have the same offset as my IK constraint with my uh, when I bind it to my left leg controller and I'm going to turn on constraint all axis because it should be uh, XYZ movement and I'm going to click on add okay now if this works properly when you select the left leg controller if you move it up and down the leg should move like this look at that so now you don't have to select your IK you can simply select your controller and you can move it the leg will move and the best part is you can always type 0 and it comes to the original position why because we made it sure that, that this particular position is a 0 position so this is the usage of creating controllers okay let's do the same for the right side so I'm going to select this with the uh, control key I'm going to select uh, right leg IK and I'm going to go with constraint point now if I click on this it should move the leg with it right so we have that let's start and continue with the arm so for the arms also I'm going to create two nub curves so this one right here bring it to the arm scale it a little bit again I'm repeating this again and again um, you can keep it as a circle okay it's just nothing wrong with it I'm just making it look nicer so um, it, it looks better and easier for me to uh, select it because more space I have uh, more shape that I have easier for me to select the uh, particular uh, IK that I'm controlling all right so um, let's snap it to the left arm IK as well so I want to snap the center point to right here of this particular curve so I can do that by again turning on some two points and moving this exactly in the middle of this particular bone right here you won't get it in the first attempt maybe you have to move it till, um, like a couple of times in order to get it exactly to the center just like this okay so let me uh, switch to the vertex mode so you can straight away switch to vertex mode by pressing function F8 or rather uh, function 8 key uh, and you can switch to F9 or F10 
or F8 again to go back to the uh, object mod. So F8 basically straight away switch to the vertex mod. Just a keyboard shortcut rather than writing, uh, right clicking on it and switching to uh, vertex mode all the time. Let me make some um, like small changes to this one as well. Just easter it changes. It will make sure that it's easier for us to control. Yeah, much better. Now let's uh, make a copy to the other side as well. So I'm going to create a duplicate, Control D, and bring one to the other side as well. So I'm going to turn on some to point and make sure that he's also snapped to the the center point of this uh, right arm IK which is right here okay that's good now let's go ahead and uh, rename these two so this one is basically uh, left arm uh, controller so I'm right um, right to double click on it and say left arm controller and this one right here is right arm controller. So let's go ahead and bind these two. So again, just like we did for the legs, you can select the left arm controller. With the control key, you can select left arm IK and go to constraint point. Now what happens is you will be able to move the hand with the uh, left arm controller. And same thing. Have spelling mistake here so you can select the right arm controller with the control key you can select right arm ik and go to constraint click on point so now you can see you can control the right arm with it as well so we have four controllers well there's something else that we need to do as well what about the rotation of the leg now we can move it up and down left and right and you can always bring it up to zero as well but what if we want to make sure that um, we, we want to rotate the leg like this for example if I grab from this particular bone and uh, I can rotate it I want to make sure that capability is also assigned to this particular control so to do that I'm going to select my left leg control I'm going to hold the shift key while holding the shift I'm going to click on left leg bone which basically select all three bones right here so I will do it again I will select my left leg controller with the shift key pressed I'm going to select this so this is not a point constraint I want to connect this as an orient constraint because it's orientation so I'm going to go to constraint go to orient constraint option reset it maintain the offset so I'm going to constrain all the axis and click on add now if it is working properly when you click on left leg controller you should be able to rotate it down right okay. let's do the same for the other side as well so with the shift key I'm going to select all the um, le right leg bones as well like that constrained orient so when you rotate you can rotate the leg as well so I did a smaller mistake here before I bind my hand to the um, controller I should have reset the values I forgot to reset the values remember now if I made a mistake I can't type 0 and bring it to the 0 position because it goes to a different place now, because of that let me uh, undo this constraint now you can um, undo the constraint uh, again and, and start from the beginning and do it or you can undo up to the point where I don't have the uh, constraint anymore and you can 
continue from that point onward whatever the method make sure before you bind your left arm control into this one uh, that you're not uh, you're resetting you're freezing you translate XYZ and everything to the zero well okay let's continue uh, we want to create the hip controller so I'm going to create another curve a little bit larger and I'm going to move it up and the center point of this should be I'm going to turn on the snap to point should be exactly hip it should map to the hip like this okay now let's make it a little bit uh, smaller so we can easily handle the hip and this one I'm going to move it up and move it back like this so I don't want these parts to play a major role here that's my hip controller so let me rename this to hip controller you can go to window outliner and rename it to hip controller and I'm gonna reset the uh, position here as well so because previous time for the hand I forgot about it let's do it earlier so modify freeze transformation so everything becomes zero right here okay so what should be binded for this one? Now think about it carefully. How can I move the entire character? So I have two um, attributes, two, two um, kind of parameters that I can bind here. I can have the spine IK, but the problem with spine IK is that you don't get the movement with it. If I even if I select spine IK, uh, I don't get any movement with it. But if you select spine IK curve you get the movement and spine IK curve is the one actually you need to buy see when I move the spine IK curve up it moves like that and you can see these strings they show the constraint the best part is if you move it down which you can see it doesn't allow the character to go down usually because these two constraints or four constraints that we have they basically hold the character so this is what we need we need to make sure that uh, spine IK curve is the one that we need to buy so to do that we need to make sure the spine IK curve which is right uh, below in the uh, near to the grid so it's right here near to the grid it's exactly aligned with the hip that means the center point of the spine IK should be aligned with the hip we can't just move this spine IK now see we can't move the spine IK curve because it's moves the character but what we need to do is move the center point of this spine IK curve to the game so how to do that well I'm going to turn on the center point and hold the letter D letter D on the keyboard which will show you the uh, pivot movement this is known as the pivot movement this is how you as long as you hold the D key you will be in the uh, pivot movement you can move it up so hold the D key move it up and make sure uh, snap to point is on that this is exactly aligned with the hip okay here we go it's exactly aligned with the hip when that happens you can turn off let go of the d key and turn off the uh, snap to point and it's right there okay so let's bind so I'm going to select the hip controller make sure that the transformations are free, freezed and with the control key I'm going to select the spine IK curve alright now I can go to constraint click on point now if you select the hip controller if you move it up and down it controls the character See? ok what about the rotation though now think about the rotation if I select my spine IK curve if I press E to get the rotation so I have the rotation like this see that's a realistic rotation so this is 
rotate x and we have rotate z that's also correct but what about the rotate y see rotate y is not correct so i want you to understand the difference rotate x is correct rotate z is correct but rotate y is not something that i need but we had something that basically gives you the correct rotate y can you remember the twist and roll options that we have so we have the twist and roll option in the spine ik so this if i select the spine ik go to the channel box this is the roll and twist now if you select roll and use the mouse wheel to drag left and right so this is what we need for the rotate y isn't it okay so now let me recap we want our hip controller to be binded to the spine ik curve in the rotate x rotate z but not in the rotate y for the rotate y we need the roll so this is exactly what we are going to do so i'm going to select the hip controller with the control key i'm going to select the spine ik curve that has been selected and i'm going to go to constraint orient options reset this maintain the offset so what i need is the x axis and the z axis only y axis i'm going to leave empty because for the y i'm going to separately bind the spine ik row for now select x and z and add and now if you select your hip control if you enable the rotation by pressing e the x works z works but not the y because we haven't bind anything to the y so let's go ahead and bind the roll of spine into hip controller y to do this you need to have something called a connection editor so we are going to create a connection between hip controllers rotate y and spine ik pro so let's go to windows general editors connection editor so we have left side and right side for the left side i am going to select hip controller and click on reload left which will load all the attributes of the hip controller and i am select the spine ik with and reload to the right so it will load all the properties of the spine ik now i can select which two attributes that i want to link with so i want to link the rotate y of the hip controller this is the hip controller to roll option of the spine ik which is right here so you can see it becomes italic as soon as i click on it meaning that i have created a connection so i have created a connection between hip control rotate y and spine ik roll and click on plus now if you do it correctly if you select on the hip controller if you go to the rotation the y axis should give you the roll this is what we want okay let's come continue so i'm going to create a copy of this one a duplicate to create the chest controller let's rename this as chest control and make sure the chest control is uh, exactly aligned with the spine 4 it should be aligned with the spine 4 here it is Let's make sure that's exactly in the middle yeah that seems right and let's uh, control some vertices to uh, make it look nicer okay just control that Drag these two points as well a little bit. Let's uh, freeze the transformation. So I'm going to go to modify, freeze transformation. 
steps are also done. So what we need to bind for the chest controller. And for the chest controller, what I need is spine IK twist. So this is what I need. So just like I did before, I'm going to go with Windows General Editors Connection Editor. And to the left side, I'm going to load the chest controller. Three dot left. To the right side, I'm going to load the spine IK. So this time, chest controller rotate Y should be connected with twist of the spine IK. Now if you do this correctly, you should see the rotate Y here is giving you the control. So we have uh, created our control rig in a partial way. Uh, so we have controllers for the leg, left leg, right leg, left arm, right arm, hip and chest. Additionally, you can create controllers for the knee, the lower leg, the neck, hair, head, uh, fingers and whatever the uh, rest of the controllers that you need. But for this particular lesson, I think this is enough. So let me show you how to control these and how to use these in order to um, create a small animation. Now I will press number 5 to fill it up and I will turn off the x-ray vision. So this is the character. Okay, let's use these controllers to uh, bring this character to a different pose. So, I'm going to use the leg controller and uh, let's keep it like that maybe and you can use the uh, hand controller which I didn't see there and you can use uh, this one see so using this you can create the exact uh, force that you need And there's something called keyframe animation which basically allows you to work in this timeline and you can change this little by little and create keyframes to create the exact animation that you need so hope you understood the basic way of rigging now as your assignment I want you to select a character you can download a character from the internet if you need uh, but I prefer if you can build your own character if you have time whatever the case um, it doesn't have to be a human character, it doesn't have to be the exact same character, you can select a different character like a mythical character like a dragon or a T-Rex or, or a dinosaur or whatever that you want. Or even a, uh, a character like a, a dog or a cat uh, or even a robot or basically a human, whatever that you need. You have the freedom to select anything that you want and create a control rig. I prefer if you give more details to it and make sure that you can change the pose of that character. So you have exactly one week to do that. Uh, I will make sure a link is available on the course web. Uh, so you create it and upload your my binaries and um, uh, the file and the, and the snapshot of your work into the course web. If you have any questions, you can ask in the question forum. Thank you.